Okay, you guys, so let's work on this. Let's work on this. Uh, find an equation for the inverse relation. Uh, let's start with a linear one just to make this easy. So here's our equation. I'm even going to, let's put it in f of x form. So we'll put it in function notation form to start with. And it's 3x minus 3 here, isn't it? All right, so lots of ways to do this. Uh, not the least of which is switch this. Take, take it out of f of x form and put it into y form, right? So put it in this form. Uh, a lot of people will switch x and y here, but I don't. I solve for x, so solve for x. I'm not going to write this out on everyone, but solve for x. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So we get y plus 3 is equal to 3x, isn't it? Then I'm going to divide both sides. If I'm solving for x, I'm going to divide both sides by 3, yeah? Uh, and that will give us, watch, that will give us y plus 3 over 3 is equal to x. Lastly, we do what? Um, we're going to switch x and y, aren't we? So switch, switch, x and y. And you're like, what the hell are you talking about? Literally, switch. So here's where the x was. Take the x out, put a y there. Take it where the y was, take the y out, put in an x, right? This can be simplified, so I know some of you little nerds out there will be doing one-third x, right? Because x over 3 is one-third x, isn't it? 3 over 3 is 1, so plus 1 is equal to y if you want to. And then, of course, we, I asked for the inverse function, so the inverse of f of x is written this way, and it would be 1 third x plus 1. If you had left it in this form, you guys, I'd have taken that as a good answer. So just want to want to make sure I'm giving the proper attention to those uh, math freaks out there. Good for you. Welcome to the club. Um, let's do this one. It's not difficult either, I don't think. Let's take, got to be careful that we don't want to leave this so f prime. So here's our f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2. Isn't that right? Uh, first thing we're going to do as usual is take this out of notation form, put it into y form. So there's y. Next thing, we're going to solve for x following the instructions from up here. So first thing I do is add negative 2 to both sides. So we get y minus 2 is equal to x cubed, right? And then... Right, we want just x, not x cubed, so to get rid of that cubed, we're going to take the third root, which is that, right? This 3 cancels that one, doesn't it? And remember to make sure we call this third root here. So we have here that x, I'm just switching sides here, x is equal to the cubed root of y minus 2, right? And then lastly, just like in the last one, we switch x and y, so... I'm going to switch x and y, so this is where we had the y, so we'll take out the y, we put an x here, and this is where the x was, here, we'll take the x out, put a y, and then from there, frankly, I'm going to go ahead and put this in function notation, so we have the inverse of f of x, sorry, inverse of f of x is equal to that, okay? One last one, this one's a little bit trickier, uh, definitely doable, it has more algebra you could do if you wanted to, so our last example is this one, we say we have f of x, is equal to negative 2x to the fifth, right? Plus one third. So we threw some fractions in there just to make it interesting. Yeah, I know. You're welcome. You're no, seriously, you're welcome. Okay. So to take the put it into y form. So here's the y form. Gonna solve for x. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add negative one third to both sides to move it over, and we get y minus one third is equal to negative two x to the fifth power. Now this is where I'm looking here, I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to divide both sides by negative 2, and that's going to look like hell over here. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to put these all into one, right? This is y to the first power, isn't it? But if I multiply this by 3 over 3, right? I, this 3 over 3 is just 1, isn't it? So if I multiply it by 3 over 3, I would get 3y thirds minus 1 third, right? We have common denominators. We don't add or subtract the denominators, right? We just do this. So... This simplifies to this, doesn't it? So if, if, if me erasing this is freaking you out, just rewind the tape a little bit, right? So we have 3y minus 1 all over 3 is equal to negative, I'm going to move this over, is equal to negative 2x to the fifth. Now, many of you have been taught here we're going to divide, but what I'm going to do instead, it is division, it just looks different, so I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this, right? Look at this for a second. If I completed this, multiplic this multiplication, it would just be division, wouldn't it? But hopefully you see why this will make it a little bit easier for you to conduct this piece of work. So we have 
I'm going to put this negative out in front if you don't mind. And you know what? If you don't mind, I'm going to take this negative. I'm just going to put it out here. Well, wait, wait, you guys remember this rule. Negative A over B is the same as A over negative B, which is the same as the opposite of A over B. So what I do is I pick which one of these forms works best for me. This is not a 9. It's, a, it's an A. All right? So this negative sign is this one here. Then we have the 3y minus 1, right? And if you don't mind, 2 times 3 is 6, isn't it? I'm going to move my negative sign in a little bit. It's equal to x to the fifth power, isn't it? From here, I think it gets easy again. And we're just going to take the fifth root of both sides, aren't we? So fifth root here. So far, so good. Last, uh, right, so we get x is equal to the fifth root of 3y minus 1 over 6. There's that negative sign. This negative sign right here is this one here. All over top of this, right? Last thing we do, you guys, is, right? We've done this before, so we're going to switch the x and y. So this was where the x, where y was, so I put an x there. And switch this, going to put the y. Then going to switch this over to function notation and say that the inverse of f of x this and we could go through the gyration of proving this okay i moved through this really quickly I, I hope it was helpful if not please go back to some of the other videos that we've done on this and they're much more in detail i just kind of wanted to plow through some of this stuff so you have a chance to really work through it um what i would do now is is i would go back to the original problems and try to solve them on your own and then when you get confused play the tape for it a little bit okay all right you guys good work good work good work good work good work